Well, joining us now to discuss these bank failures further and the impact on the industry, Perry Ann Boring, founder and CEO of the trade group Chamber of Digital Commerce, who is joining us now from Jacksonville, Florida. So, Perry Ann, obviously you have a number of members at the chamber. What are you hearing from them? How concerned are they about their ability to operate within this traditional banking system here in the U.S.? You know, I think this has been a huge wake-up call, not just for crypto businesses, but for all businesses across the United States that our financial system, it's, it's fragile. And it's, it's leverage, just like what Jeremy was talking to. And more people are starting to understand that if you have more than $250,000 in your bank account, which a lot of businesses do, uh, that you're considered an unsecured creditor to your bank. And a lot of people just are not comfortable with taking on that type of risk, especially in these volatile economic times. And you know what? They shouldn't have to. People deserve a safe place. People and businesses deserve a, a safe space to hold their hard-earned money. And what Jeremy was advocating for is a full reserve bank. Policymakers, regulators, they should be doing everything they can to restore confidence in our financial system. And a part of that mm -hmm. is bringing new business models to market, Biz banking business models that are not leveraged, that operate under full reserves. And they've gone to extraordinary lengths to prevent them from coming to market and preventing any competition in the banking system. So that's one thing policymakers can do. And they should be looking for new and innovative technologies like blockchain to modernize our financial system to create more transparency and efficiencies in the markets. But do you really think there's appetite for that post these failures, post the collapse of FTX? I just wonder reputationally if blockchain is now a bad taste in everyone's mouth. I don't understand w w how blockchain would have any type of role in these types of bank failures. The failures that we're seeing at the banks have to do with liquidity issues, risk management issues, and failure of regulatory and super supervisory powers. This had nothing to do with blockchain, and the record should reflect that. In terms of banking for uh, crypto, have we lost um, a lot here? Have we taken a few steps back, Perry Ann? Because it seems that much of the industry is now working against that. So, Silvergate and uh, Signature Bank are two banks that did bank crypto companies, not exclusively. Uh, they banked many other types of businesses as well. Um, but there's dozens of banks across the United States that bank digital asset companies. Uh, so there's, there are other places for, for, for businesses to go uh, to receive uh, ba banking um, partnerships, banking relationships. But this has always been a challenge. This, this was a challenge when we first opened the chamber in 2014, well, uh, establishing banking partners can be an issue. The bigger issue with both Silvergate and Signature failing uh, is that they both had 24-7 payment networks that many crypto businesses mm -hmm. used. Uh, the Signet platform is uh, apparently still operational at Signature today, uh, but if for some reason that uh, if that changes, that could cause a lot of operational challenges for businesses that need 24-7 access to payment systems. Right. I just think, you know, um, Nouriel Rabini tweeted, all banks doing crypto biz are collapsing good riddance. Barney Frank implied that the regulators were closing down Signature because of its crypto relationships. Um, Kavita Gupta was just telling us that HSBC, which bought the UK assets of SVB, uh, NatWest, and others are limiting crypto transactions to 1,000 pounds a day. It just seems like the, the, the tide has turned. You know, potentially, again, the, the, the issue of debanking is something that has impacted the digital asset industry for over a decade. It's an issue we've worked on for a long time. It does seem to be somewhat renewed uh, at this time. We are hearing rumors that the federal banking regulators are putting pressure on the banks to not bank digital asset companies. We would see that as a gross overstep of their powers, and it's something that we have pressured members of Congress to bring oversight to. That activity should not go unchecked, and it should not take place here in the United States. All right. Perry Ann, thanks very much. Perry Ann Boring joining us from the Chamber of Digital Commerce.